Ideally, it's trauma-informed. Um, trauma-informed care really rests on safety, collaboration. Um, I drop my agenda, or I'm at least honest about it, you know, transparent. Focused on empowerment and resilience. And voice and choice. The goal is always to increase the person's experience of choice, the, in, the, the person's experience of freedom. Um, not how freedom looks from my eyes, uh, but what freedom means to them. And it looks different for different people, uh, particularly people with eating disorders. Because food is so complex, and people's histories with food are so complex. It recognizes that every person's experience is unique and requires an individualized approach. Um, it rests on building su peer support and connecting people with community and connection and inclusiveness. It's culturally attuned, uh, gender inclusive in its care system. It addresses systemic racism, um, offers gender responsive care, and recognizes the healing value of traditional cultural connections. And it's essentially humble, too. You know, the more, really the more, um, now that I'm old, the more I know, the uh, more I realize I don't know at all. Like, I used to hear people say that, and I'd be like, <laughs> all right, I know a lot, you know? <laughs> um, but I, you know, I've, uh, I've been a lifelong learner, and I continue to be, and I'm grateful for that. So lots of unknowns for people with eating disorders, no doubt about it. Uh, no well-controlled evidence base, um, but again, we can rely on that stool. Um, always, always, always including patient preference and patient choice. We don't know yet uh, if the GLPs, when they're used for an appropriate medical indication, um, decrease core eating disorder symptoms, increase eating disorder symptoms, have no effect. Um, we don't know how long those last. We know for sure that when people stop taking these medications, they stop working. <laughs>